guys, it's your girl Matt Cox here with MA Couture Crafting. Yes, I'm in Batu, and yes, that has nothing to do with what we are talking about today. But I need to do an intro, and here we are. The Frida Bag by Annie is awesome. The, it's the easy does it pattern, and we love it. And then we have the ultimate travel bag, which we love too. But what we don't love is that binding. It's very, very difficult to do, especially if you are a novice sewer. It's not what you do on a regular basis. So there's a hack. And the hack is to sew it to the, the center strip and then roll it around to the back, but you're sewing in the ditch, so you're sewing blind. And I do not like to sew blind. So I reversed it and I wanted to show you guys what that looks like. And it totally works for me. And it will work for the ultimate travel bag and the Easy Does It and probably anything else that has that type of style construction. But for sure, the ultimate travel bag and the Easy Does It. All right, guys, I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Easy Does It. I am getting ready to make two Easy Does It bags. I need to test a sewing machine and I feel like the Easy Does It bag is small enough and awesome enough and there are some hacks that I want to try with the Easy Does It bag. So that's the one that I've chosen. So we finally gotten to the point in my channel where I am revisiting stuff. My skills should be better than when I did this two years ago. However, binding gives people fits. That's, it just does. It gives me fits, binding on the inside of the bag. But one thing that I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use the same color binding on the inside of the bag as the lining so that it doesn't show because I don't know that I need to have an accent on the inside of my bag. I'm not going to bind on the outside. I think that that's an amazing look. It's not my gift. It will not come out nice enough for me to gift. And so I don't want to... Um, I don't even want to attempt that at this point. But like I said, I'm going to hack into this. Unfortunately, well, I have this. I'm not even sure what I use this for or why I even own it. But it's the project pack. It comes with four sheets that are four that are 13 and a half by 18 and a half. And I I don't know. It's not going to work for me because the first instructions that Annie has you do is take your fat quarters, your 18 by 21 fat quarters and pieces and quilt the whole thing at one time super efficient however I am going to quilt these pieces separately I'm gonna do the bag front separately the bag back and so I'm gonna have to actually open up this bag and I hate that I'm gonna have to do it because it's all perfect and ready for the ultimate travel bag but it's a 72 by 58 piece. I hate that I'm going to open it up for these tiny two bags, but I am because I want to do these individually. And this side strip here is four and three quarters by 18. And this is only 18 and a half inches. And I like to do a full inch, if not two inches larger before I quilt it so that when I quilt it, so that when I cut it down, it's clean. So, you know, I, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to cut this open. I am going to get all of the pieces out and I'm going to check back in with you guys after I've decided what colors are going where and after everything is cut out and ready to be quilted. The way that I am about to do this is going to produce quite a bit of waste. However, I really want this to be the center of this fabric. This fabric is gorgeous, but I have so much of it. I mean, so much of it that I'm not really stressing it out. Um, if I make this the center. I know that I have two inches to work with. So I know that I've got some. And here's the center. I'm just putting this right on Frida's nose. And then I'm making the, actually I'm going to line it up with this flower. And I know for sure that I have Six, six and a half by nine and a half is which I truly need. So I know that I have enough to get it, but I don't know if I want to live that dangerously. I'm not sure. But I have this taped off to the measurement that I'm cutting first in quilting, which is the eight and a half by eleven and a half because we're cutting everything two inch two inches larger than we need. So I know I have the space, but I just don't trust it and I want it to come out looking nice. So we are going to get one like this and then for the back fabric 
we might use this girl over here and have her placed in the bottom left or something. I don't know. I don't know, guys, but I do want this dead on. I have a ton of fabric. Let me just go on ahead and get what I need to get from this. So I have this marked right here. This is the center of 8.5 by 11.5, and, and I am going to just center it, and then I'm going to take two cuts up this size and then across the top. So I played with this about as much as I care to. And so I'm just going to grab two cuts here where you're going to slice up this way. Then we're going to slice over this way. And then we're going to be sure that I got the cut. And then I'm going to lift it. And I'm going to rotate it. And this is the fun part. I'm just going to smooth it out a bit. Smooth it out, smooth it out. And we're going to put this corner right up against the 8.5 by 11. We're going to sit you right here. Okay. And now it's sitting on the inside of the tape, which has been marked at eight and a half by 11. And I'm gonna take my last two cuts. And we're gonna hope that we are pretty symmetrical. It might not be perfect, but I think this print is just busy enough to let me live. And there we go. Looks pretty symmetrical. Um, I'm looking at the birds kind of where they've all been cut off and I feel good about that. This right here is cut off pretty much at the same spot, this leaf. I feel good about it. This is definitely going to be the front of my bag and then I'm going to cut another piece of this fabric for the back of the bag. I'm not sure if I'm going to fussy cut like this, but I'm going to grab another piece. So I have cut the things for the first bag. I think I'm going to add a, um, we'll see, I don't know. This is actually gonna be the zipper strip. I'm curious to see what happens when I try to cut center down her face. I'm curious to see where this is gonna land. It's either gonna be genius or stupid. <laughs> what are the other, it won't be in between, I don't think. These are gonna be the handles. I really think that the handles would look better in color story with these but I refuse to make a handle a cuff a binding in white fabric because it's just not sensible it's just unless you cover it in vinyl we know it's going to get dirty that's going to be the most handled part of the bag why would I make that white so even though this collection came out all together I've never really thought that it went together color wise but this is going to be the lining. This is going to be the front of the bag. This is going to be the back. I am very excited about the front and the back of this bag. So that's this bag. Now I need to pick my colors and everything for the next one and then we'll be good to go. Raise your hand if you believe me when you said when I said that I was going to just cut one 18 by 21 and I was just going to do two fabrics and I am just going to do the two fabrics. However, I just I'm going to have to fussy cut this. I just can't let this fall where it falls I would like to be very intentional about this and I didn't want to be I really just thought I was just gonna let it happen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 18 by 21 piece and I'm probably gonna cut it probably about this is the 18 side I'm probably gonna cut it around uh, nine and a half maybe ten right here and then I'll just do two no three pieces, three separate pieces. I'm going to let the side strip and the zipper strip be the same fabric. Everything is cut out for the second bag that's going to be sewn on the HD9. So I fussy cut this guy right here. I'm just going to go through the center. Her handles are going to be the same. This is going to be her binding. This is also going to be the other side since I had so much fabric I was just like well we're gonna bite into it because I don't know why I bought all this fabric I, I don't know that was a fail so here's the inside and then these two pieces and so everything is cut out now let's see 
what we can get into. I'm going to mark that other quilt for quilting and uh, see what we can get into. Now that all of my fabric is quilted and it has done all the moving and whatnot that it's going to do, I am going to fussy cut this down to the appropriate size, which is six and a half by nine and a half. So I'm just going to find that original dot that I made, which was the halfway mark, and just rub it away. I did that with a friction friction marker. And now I'm going to grab some tape, and I am going to mark off at six and a half and nine and a half. As soon as I get this tape started, there we go. I'm going to come down six and a half. And that's going to be right here. That's six and a half. And we are going to come over nine and a half. This way, you're going to come down nine and a half, which is right here. I love fussy cutting with rulers in this way. It really makes me happy. You really can make this bag as big as you want. Um, the principles are all kind of the same, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty deep, pretty big bag. When we're done, it's a good size bag. So now I'm gonna grab my friction marker. All right, now that I have my friction marker here, ouch. We need half of nine and a half. So that's going to give me four and three quarters, and we need to go down by three and a quarter. So I think halfway, oops, three and a quarter, and four and three quarters. It's going to be right here. So I'm just making a dot. And this is going to be just about, not exactly perfect, but close. And I'm going to call center her nose right here. So I'm going to put this dot on her nose and see if I can see fabric all around. And I can. Oh, I hate that I'm going to lose some of this because this is so pretty over here. But you guys know what I say. You get what you get and you do not throw a fit. And so, I can, four and three quarters, boy, I'm losing a lot here, but I'm good with it. All right, and I'm going to cut, cut, cut. I'm tempted to get my bigger rotary cutter out, but I really don't need it, so. Alright. So that's gone, that's gone. I didn't get nearly as much shrinkage as I thought I would, but. Like I said, you get what you get, you don't throw a fit. I'm going to rotate it away from me where I have the two clean edges, and we're going to put the two clean edges right in this L. And everything else should just be magic. Oh, 
and that dot is back on her nose and my tummy is growling and we'll take off those next two corners so we took off the next two edges and this is what I'm left with which is a beautiful panel and now I'm going to go around the edges with a 1 8 inch seam to seal this up so it's not flipping and flapping and doing all the things no that's wrong first I'm going to take off these corners hold on let me grab my other ruler I have the two and a half inch circle if you don't um, you can use the template that comes on the pattern no worries and in order to use this you just shove this puppy right in the corner until the edges kind of butt up against it right here and then you just shave it off and you see it butts up right there and then we're just gonna take it off and now we have a rounded corner I'm gonna do that to all four sides and then we're gonna seal it up and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other the other piece that looks just like this okay um, when you are sealing your edges so my edges are sealed 1 8 of a way I used my secondary machine to do that because I can wiggle the needle and I didn't want to have to switch out feet on my other machine so go around it with the front facing up flip it over go around it with the um, the back facing up what that does is ensures that you get it and go around maybe twice maybe even three times the more you sew soft and stable the more it compresses so you can even move your needle just a little bit here a little bit there if you want because getting these edges compact will be important for success with this bag for whatever reason when this one got quilted up it seems like I've got a little less to work with and so this needs to be four and three quarters by 18 so I'm just going to give myself some overhang over here and overhang over there and we're going to cut this right at 18 I've got a gazillion rulers out but really that's not necessary I just do I've got them so I might as well use them so I cut that right at 18 I'm gonna flip this around and line it up right at zero because I know it's straight and then we're gonna cut it right at 18 too Yeah, there's not as much waste on these pieces for whatever reason maybe it's the way that I quilted it who knows and then we're gonna do four and three quarters and then we'll move on to the next pieces and then I'm gonna seal this one then the next one I'll seal that zipper one and then we'll get to some more constructing so really quickly our tip our next tip is I wanted this face but I really wanted to put clear run clear tape not clear tape clear thread through this area however you're stitching it from the back and clear thread in the bobbin that's the whole thing so I stopped stitching right here and stopped stitching right here on both sides when it comes to the second part where you're stitching down to seal your edges in so what I did right here was just use my good old fusible permanent um, glue and just hit, hit it with the iron so it would glue so it would dry super fast and now it's flat it's not as flat as the sewn part but it's flat I feel okay about it this is a, a cute little something there 
and I don't have black thread going right through there or right through here. Okay, so this is the part that we've all been waiting for. In the Facebook groups, there is a hack that attaches the binding to the drip, the zipper strip right here, raw sides out this way, attaches it to the zipper strip on both sides, and then attaches it to the back. And what that does, the binding will be here, and then you flip it over to the back. And if you want to sew with the back part of the bag on the sewing machine, you're sewing blind. So it would be here. You're assuming and hoping and wishing that you were getting it caught in the back. That is not my gift. I know it's not my gift. I've met myself before. It, it just doesn't work for me. So what I'm going to do is attach the binding to the, I'm going to attach the binding here. And then we are going to see if we can't get it. I'm going to attach the binding to the, the back strip first. So then it will be just like, you know, quilting. And then I'll pull it over to the front and I'll be able to see that I'm catching it for sure. So first things first, sew the binding down all the way around with a scant quarter. Definitely not a full quarter because I believe, well, I could do a full quarter. I don't think it's really going to matter because I'm probably going to be inside that quarter inch. Okay, so we'll do it with a regular quarter and we'll go for it. And also I'm going to switch my bobbin and my sewing thread because I definitely want the gold touching the gold and the black touching the black. So I'm going to just swap those out real quick. guy. Now it's time to join the strips and I know that people love to join them on an angle because it reduces bulk and this would be one of those times when you would really want to reduce bulk. However, that's not my gift. I'm going to overlap this by a quarter inch. The only time I try to fidget with the crossing is if I was going to submit this for some kind of award or something, you know, a quilt show. I'm not, so there's no sense in me even trying to pretend like I get that right on the first try because I often do not. So I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to mark a quarter inch from where I just cut. I'm going to mark it and then I'm going to move on with my life. If you want to do it on a join, that is definitely the more professional finish, but I'm going to shorten my stitch length and just go right through this guy. Right sides together, shorten stitch length, and we're going to be moving on. So I joined it on a straight line there. I'm going to continue sewing here. And then after that, I'm going to drive around this guy at, one more time at an eighth of an inch to just tack down the, um, we're just going to tack this down. So we're just going to compress this just a little bit more. So we're just going to go around an eighth of an inch here just for good measure. It just feels like the right thing to do because I know what's upcoming. <laughs> so we're just going to give our machine a chance to, uh, really work its magic 
and you see how it's kind of lifting right here we are going to be sure that we just stitch that down let's do it Now that we have a couple of lines of stitching, if you really wanted to really compress this down and you weren't working on a straight stitch machine, I'd say do a zigzag there because it will compress it even more. So I've got these pins and they're dressmaker pins. They, my quilting pins, for whatever reason, I don't know where all of them are and they're not, they're bending. So I have some dressmaker pins that should probably do the trick. Why do I have two different colors out? Because I'm going to use one color to mark the top so that I know that this is a zipper strip. I don't want the back, I don't want the front to be, um, you guys get it. It's got to be the right side. So we want to make sure that we're matching that up properly. I'm going to go on ahead and fold it in half and then fold it in half again and mark the pins. So I'm also just tucking these down because I am going to, um, why am I doing this? Because we are going to be, oops, poopsies. I don't want to get any tucks or anything like that once I sew this down. So we are just going to get it out the way. And I am doing that by pinching it and moving it so that it doesn't get caught in the seam. Okay. And now those are all down and my sides and whatnot are pinned. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this guy and we'll be back. Okay, I've got my sides marked. I've got all my sides marked here. I've got my system with the three blue there, the white there. I know which one goes with what. And now I'm getting ready to start clipping like my life depends on it. I've got all my wonder clips. We can put the dress pins away because I am the queen of ouch. If I use pins, I'm going to stick myself. It's just what I do. It just happens. Let's get to pinning. So I've matched my pins here. And I'm going to be sewing with the base of the bag on the machine. So we are going to, I'm going to just flip it this way and start wonder clipping. All right, the bag is all ready to go. Um, the binding is pinned down a little bit just to keep it out of the way. And I'm gonna go nice and slow and tack this around once and then roll it to the front. Let's see what happens. So I just finished sewing the bag back, which is fine. In here, it got a little thick, so I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I just, I came in more than the quarter inch that I was supposed to. So, I mean, right here, we're good. Right here, we're fine. It's just these short ends. I'm going to go around with a uh, one eighth inch just inside that, just to compress that one more time. Then I'm going to turn the binding and we'll see what kind of results I get. So now I am just flipping this and tugging on it and tugging on it and pulling it to the front and then using my wonder clips to clip it in place. Looks pretty good thus far. And I'm making sure that I'm putting the back of the wonder clip on the flat because I'm going to put this the back 
on here again. And I'm pulling it to the front. I'm just pulling it, pulling it, tugging on it. Just yanking it over like this. All right, so I've got it clipped. It looks pretty good. I don't know what's going to happen right here where it's super tight, but I've got my biani stiletto ready so that I can pull and let's just see what happens. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen with the line of stitching. So when you're pulling it to the back, you can stitch in the ditch and you kind of get what you get here. We'll see. We'll, we're going to see and figure it out. All right, so I just finished stitching and my saving grace is that the thread matches the bag, which makes me happy. There are some places where I hit it just right, which is nice, but my main concern was that I catch the binding all the way around and I was able to do that. It is not the world's most neat, but you know. When have I ever sewn anything that was just extremely, extremely neat? So like right here, you know, it looks good. I caught it right where I needed to. And then I get a little wiggly over here. And that actually did not get in the ditch. There are some areas that actually are in the ditch over here. You can't see the thread that hit just right, even though it's a little bit wobblier right there. Weird, right? This is probably one of the tightest bindings that I've ever done. It feels good. It does not look bad at all. Um, I wouldn't want to put this on the outside like this, I don't think. It's not quite, it's not horrible actually. You know, people do the binding on the outside, but I certainly, no, they're certainly, no, no, no. If I were doing the binding on the outside, I don't know how people do that and get that beautiful, but... For me, my main concern was that this come out smooth and cleaner and I catch the binding and I did. It's inconspicuous. And remember guys, it's just the inside of the bag, but I was able to catch the binding. I knew I was catching the binding and it feels very sturdy and nice. And um, I gotta be careful, there's pins in here. But it looks, it looks good. I don't have any issues with it. So now I'm going to do the other side, and um, we will go from there. Yeah, that looks good. There's no yellow or anything showing. It looks good. Because, again, this is the inside of the bag. You know, we act like this is the, the part that's showing. And for some people, they do. But for me, I do not bind on the outside because I know myself. But it can be done with sewing the binding to the panel and I find that much easier, much, 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 much easier than I do um, trying to just do it the way that Bayani does it. She's amazing. She's been doing this forever. But this was 20 gazillion times easier. And I can actually see that it looks nice. I don't have any puckers that are going to mess with the bag. Looks good. I'm pleased. I'm going to do the things to the other side and we will be cooking with gas. This bag will be done. Luckily, um, this side came out way better than the other side um, in regards to not jumping out of the ditch. It just stayed right in there. This one felt a little bit more comfortable when I was turning it. Um, the outside doesn't look bad. Like, there are some little parts right here, but I still didn't miss anything, you know? 
the corners are tricky but this is not difficult you don't feel like you're wrangling it just it's cool and remember guys this is the inside of the bag it's not that big of a deal and he doesn't want to come out so we're going to give him a pull and a clip nice and this guy here if you don't come out easily we'll give you a pull and a clip and we're gonna go through pushing out these corners and giving it a nice massage rolling it between my fingers trying to get it as far out as possible and of course we can take our point turner and just go around and and push and smooth until our heart is content but this bag looks pretty good it needs a little pressy press I've taken the pins out that have stuck me to no end but I'm gonna give it a nice pressing and I think it looks pretty good I think it looks really good actually So for the binding hack, we have got all of our pieces. This is our prepared zipper strip that's been quilted and it's been sealed all around. I took a two and a quarter strip, folded it in half and pressed it. And now I'm just going to sew down a quarter inch on one of the sides. Now that I've sewn down, remember this is the back. I'm going to flip it over to the front and I am going to press this in place and I'm going to add a bead of permanent adhesive you guys know I love to use glue so I am going to flip this around and I'm gonna glue it down and press it really good so that it lays flat here and then I'm going to trim off I could trim off the edges right now actually and make them flush And I'm going to do the same thing to this zipper strip. So we're just going to flip this to the front. Is that old pen? Lovely. And I'm just going to give it a little press here. And then flip it to the front and glue it down. So now we have flipped this forward and we've warmed it up and given it a little press. And now I'm just going to add a little glue. Kind of in the middle, not all the way at the tip. I don't want it oozing out, but I just kind of want this to tack it down a little bit. Just a little to hold it in place before I actually stitch this down. And I'll press this again with the iron and that will hold it in place. So here are my two strips, make them face each other. I have the zipper. Um, prepped just like usual I'm gonna open it up I'm gonna remove this one and we are going to make sure that the teeth show here and this would be great if you had some of that 1 8 tape that people talk about all the time that will help hold this in place 
I actually might throw a couple more beads of glue down just to be sure that the zipper stays in place and I am going to top stitch right down and it should catch the zipper we're gonna throw a couple of a couple of clips here just to be sure that the zipper teeth are showing and we'll top stitch it down and then do the exact same thing to the other side and voila we will have the zipper strip done and the tape attached to it and yay netting that I got when I was doing the ultimate travel bag forever ago and I didn't understand how much like a yard was or how much I asked for so I have a ton of it so we are going to hack this and add a little netting a little pocket on the inside um, of the the pouch the easy does it bag there is one side that does not stretch and then there's one side that stretches way more. I want to make sure that the stretchy side, which is going to be this side apparently, is the, yeah, that's the stretchy side. I'm going to make sure that that goes on the long side of the bag. So the bag is cut to six and a half by nine and a half. I want to be sure that it's going to be nine and a half. And I think I'm going to do this by one two three four let's do four inches let's make it a four inch high pocket maybe four and a half let's do one two three four and a half yeah we're gonna make it a four and a half inch pocket so let me see if I have enough over here I do because for whatever reason I cut this funky so we are going to just cut this little piece here. Nice and easy. I'm doing a four and a half inch pocket. And now I'm going to grab the binding. Do I like four and a half inches? I do. I do like it. Okay. I'm letting it overhang just a smidge. And now I'm going to grab my elastic binding. So here I have some fold over elastic. It's actually by by Annie. I don't know why I have this color. I think somebody was having a sale, and if I see a sale, well, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and use this color because I don't feel like changing the thread in my, <laughs> in my machines. And it's not blue thread in my machine. However, it's a lighter color. You can use the shiny side out or the dull side out. I think I'm going to use the shiny side out. Maybe it'll help hide the fact that I am absolutely not using the proper, um, the proper color. And all I'm going to do is just put this right in here and fold it over and sew down. 
nothing special I'm just gonna put it right there fold it over in half and sew down nothing special no special measurements just fold over sew down call it a day so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it here and we'll just do that and we'll put this away for another day and we'll just sew it. Now that I have this all prepared, it's got a little curve to it. I don't care about that. And luckily that white um, stitching is hidden pretty good with the shiny fabric. So now I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to let it slightly overhang on the sides and the bottom. And I'm going to stitch one eighth around the sides and the bottom, leaving this top part open. I might stick a few pins in it just to keep it secure. Now that I have my pocket attached, I'm just going to go around and trim off the excess. I'm going to actually put this down on the table and we're just going to trim super duper carefully. I'm actually going to get a little closer here. Take off that. And now I have a pocket. Very exciting. And I'm very happy that it's the right side up because I was a little concerned for a quick moment. <laughs> now I'm just going to go on ahead and put this uh, together as usual. Finding the centers and attaching it to the strip. And nothing else to worry about. All right. This doesn't add any bulk. So you don't have to worry about if your machine can handle another layer because you're not dealing with adding bulk here. Last tip is be sure that you mark some kind of way or color code or whatever you need to do your um, top because it's all fun and games until you put it together and you've realized that you've sewn it incorrectly. So the red part for me is the top and then the other pins let me know that it's the sides. It's time to join these um, the ends and I know that joining on a diagonal angle distributes bulk and if this were going to be uh, at a show on a quilt I sure would however I just can't make that make sense for these bags so I'm gonna go on ahead and shorten my stitch length cut this a quarter inch over sew it together and go on about my binding business so I have joined it just like this right sides together I am going to open it give it a finger press fold it in half put it down and sew right back along this line and I'm just gonna sew down that way and that should be fine 